I've been to the King Kong ride at Universal Hollywood and now I can finally answer if it is good or not. Short answer, it is not. You are sitting in a car shaking around as a movie of Kong fighting dinosaurs in 3D plays around you. It's pretty dumb. The long answer is that this is only a small part of a larger ride that takes you around the Rio Universal Studios and is really worth it. So you should take the ride and take a look at Kong by yourself. Finally, here's a picture you could find on the internet, but which I took by myself and I'm showing you anyway. Today we are talking about a movie that doesn't come from our old pals at Toho. No, it doesn't come from Daya either. Instead, it was made by Shochiku and it shows. Goke, body snatchers from... Where is it? Oh, there it is. Goke, a body snatcher from hell remains relatively unknown compared to Toho Tokusatsu from the same period. Nonetheless, it managed to amass a following for itself, going as far as becoming a personal favorite of Quentin Tarantino. Which means it sucks. <laughs> this following is no doubt thanks to Goke standing out from the sea of sci-fi flicks of the time, especially the ones from Toho by being more colorful, violent and even sexual than its peers. At the same time that it features lackluster special effects and what is probably the most laughably heavy-handed and nonsensical plot I've ever seen. During an attempted hijacking, a plane has a close encounter with a UFO, getting out cruelly and crash landing in a desert. The hijacker survives the accident and leaves the scene just to come face to face with the flying saucer from before which transforms him into a blood-sucking vampire. Now the other survivors must not only deal with being stuck in the middle of the desert with no food or water, but also survive an alien zombie. In many ways, this movie is similar to Matango, at least in premise, featuring a diverse cast of characters cast away in a remote location with a paranormal presence trying to kill them, if they don't do that to themselves first, that is. The main difference here is that Matengo's characters represent people from all walks of life whose interactions reveal a certain worldview to the audience, while also preserving the illusion of these being real people in a real situation. Your mileage may vary on how well the characters and their drama work, but it is undeniable that this approach leads to a much more organic form of storytelling. Now, why am I telling you about the basics on storytelling like I was some hacky video essay youtuber? It's because Goke's characters are not written like real people, instead being walking stereotypes serving as mouthpieces for the creators to convey their very pathetic misanthropic messages. You have a sleazy politician who really doesn't care about people, an arms dealer who pimps his own wife to the politician in exchange of political privileges the wife herself who is okay about being pimped, but chills on his spineless husband nonetheless, a widow of an American soldier who really hates war. I hate war! I hate war! During war everyone is miserable! A professional killer hired to take out politicians, that was the sixes. An edgy boy who lies about a bomb and a plane just for the kicks of it. <laughs> and wrapping it all up, a psychologist, who likes to get people on the brink of a nervous breakdown while speaking about the inherent evilness of humankind that comes up in life or death situations, like the one they are right now. If that wasn't enough, the villainous alien invaders themselves make it clear they are destroying the human race because we suck and are way too destructive for our own good. If there is one thing that sci-fi movies from this period, Japanese or otherwise, are, is preachy. You know that, you've watched Godzilla. But never before have I seen such a laughable attempt at conveying the humans are awful cliché, desperately hammering aphorisms into the audience's heads. Try hard, 
Yeah, that's the term. The whole thing seems to be a try-hard attempt at edginess by a 13-year-old who thinks he's smarter than he actually is. Which is probably why Tarantino liked it. Alright, alright, that was the last one, I promise. When I say this movie attempts at edginess or laughable, I really mean it. I chuckle with the dialogue and even more with the obligatory and completely out of the left field twist ending in which the remaining survivors arrive at a highway. A highway that was at a walking distance from their crash site, mind you, only to discover everybody dead. Then the alien fleet arrives and destroys the planet. This is as cheesy as you get with this kind of movie. It is bad. Terrible even, but it is in it that lies the charm of the whole thing, you know, it is probably because they seem so sincere about everything that is happening. It also helps that, like I said, this is pretty different from other tokusatsu films from the period. The thematic and imagery hint at a more mature intended audience than you would see earlier in the decades. Granted, most of this is because mainstream cinema both Japanese and international, was turning towards exploitative content in an attempt to recuperate a dwindling audience. But it is still fun to see a guy's head getting cracked open and a space line crawling inside of it. Speaking of which, the only thing about this film that is unironically nice are the visuals, as the aggressive use of contrast and color, especially red, make everything pop, literally, like few movies of the time do. Just look at the very first shot of the film, with the airplane against the red sky. It looks so good, no wonder Tarantino copied for Kill Bill. I love that just to punctuate how this movie is a little refreshing to watch after years consuming basically nothing but films made by the same dozen people over the course of a decade. Granted, that doesn't mean OK is good per se, but I still had a better time with it than with most of the non-Godzilla toe flicks I've revealed in the last two years. Even if, largely because its drawbacks, make it a more entertaining product in a I can't believe someone actually thought it was good kind of way. It was also as good as an excuse I will ever get to tune on Tarantino a little, which is never a waste of time. Anyway, I could have gone on a little longer and riffed on stuff like this woman missing the vampire right in front of her. No. Go away. Or this kid lighting an explosive only to hold it close to himself instead of, I don't know, throwing it at the monster. But somehow I managed to get overdue with a script I was ahead of schedule with, so screw me I guess. Next time is H-Man, stay tuned.